Welcome back to the channel, guys. It is me, ADS or Muffin Boy, guys. So today, guys, we're doing an Asian Cup. I think it's Day 8 review. I think it's Day 8. Yeah, Day 8, Day 8. So today, we'll be discussing about, and man, I think we've just witnessed our first real big upset in the Asian Cup. Iraq 2, Japan 1. And this result is so significant because we're going to talk about how this result is. And for Iraq, man, this is a huge, huge statement. It's amazing because they were fantastic on the day. And you look at the Japan 11 they started. They started um, um, Ito, Binamino, Kubo, uh, Asano, Ito. And I just think for Japan in particular, it was very interesting. Now, the one concern I do have with Japan is that they don't have a recognized striker. Because Asano, for me, I don't think his best position is a striker. I believe he's more of a winger. Let me actually fact check that for you guys. I think his best position is a wing, right winger. Yes, that's not his best. He can play as a striker, but that's not his best position. And you can see, I think Japan is really struggling with that. And even though they scored four against Vietnam in the last game, I think it just showed more of how bad Vietnam were in the day. Because Vietnam defensively were not great in the last game. And remember, Japan struggled to win that game. They had to come from behind in that game, you know. And for Iraq, man, they took the game to Japan. They took the game to Japan. Um, I'm looking at that first goal from Hosan, man. What a, what a cross that was. Great, great cross it was. And Suzaki makes a save. You're thinking, okay. It's good, and then he gets on the end of the rebound to make it 1-0. And at this point, you're like thinking, okay, Japan, man, they know how to come from behind. We've seen this before. They came from behind against Germany. They come from behind against Spain. They come from behind against Vietnam. Then the second goal came in for Iraq, and it made it 2-0. And at this point, it was like, wow, what a cross that is from Yaya. What a beautiful cross that is for Hussein. Scored that diving header to make it 2-0. And at this point, you're, if, you think, if you're Japanese, you're thinking, wow. This is really bad. Really, really bad start. You know? And then obviously in the second half, Japan did come alive. They did make some substitutions on themselves. They brought in Tomiyasu off the bench. They eventually brought in Yuada, Ritsu Doan, Maada, and Hatata. And you could see that even though Japan pushed a lot in the second half, Iraq were pretty defensive in the second half. Um, Japan just couldn't find that goal. Endo did score a goal there, um, right in stoppage time, but it wasn't enough from a close header. And for Japan, man, this is a huge, huge loss for them because with this result, this means that they're going to probably finish second in the group. Because remember, guys, I believe it's head-to-head. -head. Head-to-head is a tiebreaker in the Asian Cup. It's not goal difference. So you can see right here, guys, Japan can no longer finish above Iraq. Iraq have basically topped the group. Unless Indonesia beats Iraq. Yeah, I think that's the only... No, no, no. Actually, no. Because Indonesia Iraq already played. So, yeah, basically, Iraq have basically topped the group. They will be group winners. And now... It's going to be interesting for Japan because Japan now have to basically play Indonesia in the final match today. And if Japan lose that game, they could be in trouble because they may they're going to go through in third place. Now I do think they're going to have an, but yeah, goal difference, man. So for Japan, man, this is going to be very very interesting for them. And for Rackman, you got to give it to them. They were fantastic on the day. Japan just didn't really create a lot of chances. And I like I said before, guys, I don't trust Suzaki. Suzaki for me is a terrible goalkeeper. I don't know what. Uh, Moriyasu is thinking because for me if I'm Moriyasu, I'm benching Suzaki. I'm benching Suzaki because okay You can't really blame him for the second goal that first goal though was terrible Rebound at that kind of close range and you can even argue for the second goal. He could have done better there Um, you know the second goal so Suzaki man not very very confident Apparently my commentator was saying he was one of the best goalkeepers in the Japanese league whatsoever and all this kind of stuff, and I don't, I don't see it. Man. I just don't see it in this tournament. Obviously, you guys know I don't watch the Japanese league like that. But um, you know, it just shows, man. Uh, Japan, man, they need to do some changes. Moriyasu, you know, you gotta start recognized striker. You gotta start a striker up top. You gotta start Yuada. Yuada needs to start the next game. You cannot start Asano the next game against Indonesia. And for Japan, man, it's gonna be interesting because if they, if they finish second this group, they will likely play the group winner of Group E, and Group E has South Korea. South Korea. Assuming that they get their job done, we could see Japan, South Korea in the round of 16 instead of the final, which I was hoping for, guys, and I don't want to see it in the round of 16, but, you know, it is what it is. And maybe it, and maybe it's good for the tournament. It makes the tournament more interesting, more complicated, and uh, makes it more unpredictable, so we get a heavyweight clash in the round of 16. But we'll see if Japan gets the job done against Indonesia, because if Japan don't get the job done against Indonesia, then uh, all this, what I'm saying, is nothing. So, yeah, for uh, Japan, man, I think what they need to le learn from this game is they have to start at the front putter because I think they underestimated Iraq. Iraq basically took the game to Japan, and I don't think you, Japan expected that. But I think Japan was thinking, okay, we'll just ease ourselves in the game and get as better and better as the game progresses. But Iraq took the game to them. Iraq took the game to them, and that's what they didn't expect, and hence the reason why um, 
you know, Japan just struggled. So it's going to be interesting, man. And so that was my thoughts on Japan. Iraq 2, Japan 1. Moving on to the other game we got here. It is um, Vietnam nil, Indonesia 1. Oh, wow. Vietnam, man. I'm very, very disappointed, man. And this is a huge upset, man. I know people are going to say it's not really that big of an upset because the two of them know each other. It's like a Southeastern Asian derby, I believe. The two men have this like, local rivalry against each other and this kind of stuff. But for me, it's still an upset. Even if it's not a huge, huge upset, it's still an upset. You know, because look at the FIFA rankings. Vietnam is ranked 94th in the world. Indonesia is ranked 146th. Absolutely crazy. And for Indonesia, man, they were fantastic with this guy. I thought their game plan in this game was spot on. And I think you have to give credit to the coach, Chao Yong Shin. Hopefully I pronounced that name right. And for Vietnam, man, it was just disappointing for them. I really expected more from Vietnam because you look at the stats here in the first half. They were just simply a dreadful. Yes, they had more possession and everything. But you look at the amount of shots on target they had. They were just not great in this game. I don't really remember... Vietnam clear, creating a clear-cut goal-scoring opportunity. Indonesia, on the other hand, they did in the first half. They created some good chances. Penalty was given, and for me, it was the right decision. That guy caught a completely put hands all over Bahar. I forgot who gave away the penalty. Was it Nugon? Let me actually check. Let me see if he gave away a penalty. Let me see if it says right here. Yes, Nugon gave away a penalty. Very, very, very obvious. And upstep Bahar, and Bahar scores it brilliantly. And the second half, man... I will admit, Vietnam did improve in the second half. You can see that the substitutions did change. I think um, bringing this Pham Tong Lee guy in came in, made a difference. Van Kung Kust as well. The double substitution at halftime. And Indonesia were being very defensive in the second half. Very, very defensive. They knew that, hey, we're going to park the bus and just see out this one because we need to get the three points to keep ourselves a fighting chance. And you can't fault them for that because they're the inferior team. Because Vietnam had the way better players, even with a depleted team. And... Indonesia took the game to them. Indonesia were defensive, and you know what? And you got to respect it. As the underdogs, you have to figure out ways to win, right? And this is a way to win. Even if you don't agree with it, you don't think it's pretty, it's whatever, you know? And for um, Indonesia, man, they were fantastic, man. Absolutely fantastic defensively. Vietnam did get some good goal scoring opportunities. In the second half, you can see right here in the statistics, they actually did show up. Um, they had a really, really good save right at the end there, and I think there is another chance they had in the second half. I don't quite remember, but... For Vietnam, as I said, man, they were just very, very, uh, they just weren't efficient enough in, in, in the final third, and that's what ultimately cost them. And you could say in some instance it was kind of a game of two halves where Vietnam dominated the second half and Indonesia dominated the first half. And obviously, Indonesia's defensive display sealed a three massive points. And then obviously, they got a red card out of frustration, uh, the second yellow, and um, it was definitely a second yellow. That guy just clearly took down the Indonesian player, and he had to get sent off. Sent off. So he's going to be missing their final game against um, Iraq and to be honest with you Vietnam it's it's over for them because even if they do beat Iraq their goal, their head to head is not good the head to head Indonesia have a way better head to head than them so basically Vietnam or basically eliminate have nothing to play for so for Iraq man this is a great opportunity for them to do the business so for Vietnam man very disappointing man and um I, I really thought Vietnam would do better I'm very disappointed I think that game against Japan was kind of somewhat paper into the cracks. And, like, they just couldn't create enough goal score opportunities because in that game, they basically exploited Japan's set pieces, which we talked about earlier and how Iraq basically exploited that. So, yeah, basically, um, Vietnam didn't really get create any good goal score opportunities in open play. So, yeah, that's pretty much that, man, pretty much that. Moving on to the final game we got here. It is Hong Kong nil, Iran won. I got to say, man, this Iran team, I was very disappointed with. I expected so much more. After their win against Palestine, I thought they were back. I thought Iran would do something here, guys. And honestly, Iran, for me, you could even argue in some essence they were lucky to win this game. Because, my goodness me, man, they were terrible with possession. I saw a lot of times they were giving the ball away in bad areas. And Hong Kong, if they had better finishing, they could have scored. They could have scored, man. They could have scored. And... For Iran here in particular, man, it's just really disappointing. And I really don't understand this experiment with putting Taremi at Cam. I just don't think Taremi is as effective as a Cam. If you want to get the best out of Taremi, you have to put him as a striker. So if I'm the Iran coach, I you I, you need to start. For me, you got to start Osmoot and Taremi up front. You know, and that that's that should be the two uh, strikers. Now, where is Osmoot? Okay, Osmoot's on the bench. He didn't get used. But yeah, Osmoot and Taremi needs to start the two strikers. Because for me, man, as I said, Hong Kong will just... They, 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 they took the game to Iran. Hong Kong really played well. They had a really big chance early in the game. I think it was a really bad giveaway from Iran there. 
and um, at Hong Kong almost capitalized. Obviously, Iran did open the scoring. Very, very nice, very nice combination of play from the fullback to the winger to get the goal. Mohamadi Gayudi. And then the second half, man. Second half was just bad. Second half was really bad. Um, you can see right here, Iran only got one shot on target and four shots, and they just couldn't generate chances. And I really feel like Hong Kong, for me, that chance they had in the first half was probably the best chance they could have had. You know, and for Iran, man, as I said, very unconvincing, not convinced with this win whatsoever. But maybe they, maybe they underestimated Hong Kong, and maybe they were also kind of, you know, having their eyes on the UEE game because that's the really decisive game, to be fair. Like this game. They already got the three points, and they were thinking, okay, you know what? We already won this game, so why should we even bother going more full strength? Which is probably the reason why Osman didn't come on this kind of stuff, you know? But, yeah, I think Amir Goloniki, hope I'm pronouncing his name right, I think he needs to start Osman and Taremi up front. Because, for me, Taremi just doesn't work at camp. Uh, and Godos didn't really have a great game. And Ben Radiv, uh, made some misplaced passes, I think, here and there. And uh, he could have um, been punished, but, you know, it is what it is. And um, for... Uh, Iran, man, this is a huge three points. They're through to round 16. Also, Iraq is through to round 16 as well. So that's pretty much that reaction. So hope you guys did enjoy this reaction. So please let me know if any major talking points I missed in the comments below. I'm sure there probably is. And yeah, like I said, guys, I'll see you guys for tomorrow. I'll see you guys later. So yeah, everyone guys, like and subscribe. And yeah, I'll see you guys later, man. Peace out.